Now it's time to implement selection sort in Java. So in the previous video, we have talked about the bubble sort, right? And this is how it works. Now, one thing to remember in the inner loop, can you see this loop? In this loop, we are basically doing the swapping. So it increases the time as well. So in selection, what you do is you basically swap this. Of course, you do that swapping, but outside the inner loop, somewhere here. So it reduces the number of swap you're doing. How will you do it? So what I will do is I will just remove the entire code from here because this is the bubble sort. I don't need this. And what we have here is we have the array, which is which has six elements. We got a size variable where we are storing the length of an array. And then we also have a temp variable for swapping. Then we are printing the array before sorting then, and we are printing the array after sorting, okay? So if you run this, you will get the values before sorting, after sorting, but at this point they are same. It's because the main logic of sorting is missing here. So let's write the logic for selection sort here. The thing is, in the theory we have said that we'll go for the maximum value, the biggest value to swap or we'll put the biggest value at the end. Let's say in the practical, let's try to implement with the smallest value. And we'll, we, we'll, we have seen both the approach then. So what we're going to do is we'll look at the entire array and then we'll find the smallest value, which is two. Of course, you have to iterate between all the values. And then once you got the smallest value, you will swap the six with two because two should be the first value. And that's how we can start. And for doing that, we have to use two loops the outer loop and inner loop. We'll start outer loop with zero and then we'll say i less than uh, size, right? Okay, so we'll say i plus plus. But also we can make it more efficient by saying that size minus one is because if you remember when we were doing the sorting and when, once you got all the values sorted except the first value or the last value, you don't basically sort the one value, right? So you can reduce the number of iterations you go for. So we can say size minus one and we'll see if that works or not. And if it works, then we are happy. We'll also go for the inner loop. Now for the inner loop, we'll go for J equal to. Now where do we are going to start J? So basically if you're putting the starting, the biggest value or the smallest value at the start, what it means is after for, for every iteration, the inner loop, we, are going, we can skip the first value, right? So for the, for the second iteration, we can skip the first value. For the third iteration, we can skip the first two values because they are sorted, right? So we have two sections, right? Sorted array and unsorted array. So here we can start with J equal to I. Yeah, in fact, uh, when your I value is zero, J should start from zero. So we can say J equal to I and J less than size and J plus plus. So basically we have to, end, we have to go till the end. Uh, okay, so that's the for loop we have. Now what you do inside this? So we have to find the minimum value. To start with, we can take min value variable here. So I can say int min is equal to zero. In fact, we want the min index, not the min value because we have to work with the index, right? And we'll say the index is by default minus one. And here to start with, we'll start with min uh, index equal to i. And then what you do, you basically check if the array, which is nums of min index. Now we want this to be smallest value, right? So I assume that this is the smallest, but what if this is not the smallest compared to the value which we are considering? The value which is considering here is nums of j. So example, if this six is the smallest which we are thinking, in fact, you know, we should be saying i plus one. The reason being, when you are saying that six is the minimum value, we are assuming that, and then we are comparing with five. Now you will get five when you say j starts with i plus one, because in the first iteration, the value of i will be zero, and this five is one, right? So we'll compare these two values. Okay, if six is smaller than five, then everything works. But what if six is greater than five? In that case, we have to swap. Now, okay, we don't have to swap. We basically have to change the min index to J because the new index we will get is J. So the new index here is one, okay? Uh, so that's the min, min index. So what we are doing by doing this is after the entire iteration, you will get the minimum value from this array, okay? So that means after this iteration, you will you will know that two is the minimum value. Now, once you know the minimum value, what you do is you swap two with six. It's that simple. How do you swap two and six? How do you know we have to swap six? Because i is referring to six and the min index is referring to two. So we can simply swap them. So we can use a temp variable here and we can put nums of uh, min index and we can say nums of min index is equal to nums of i and nums of i 
is equal to 10. So basically we just have to swap them. So what we are doing is in the inner loop, we are just finding the minimum value. And then once you find it, you simply swap it with the min value, which you're considering, which is the first value. And as the I value goes up, first you will compare with this, then you compare with the five and you compare, then you make two as a minimum after, of course, after, after the swapping. And I will, what, I, what I will do is I will also print this values after each iteration. So I can just copy this and paste it here. And we also print a new line to get it on the new line. So now if you run this, let's see what happens. So you can see if this is, okay. Uh, I will, after printing this also, I will just say new line. Or maybe I will just keep this new line before the for loop printing. Okay, let's run. And you can see this is before swapping and then once, and this is after swapping. So let's compare the value. Is it properly sorted? Uh, yes, two, four, five, six, eight, nine. Those are the values we have. And then see the steps. In the first iteration before swapping, uh, so this is the first iteration. What you do is you know that two is the minimum value. So you swap six with two and that's done. Then in the second iteration, you find the minimum value. So the minimum value from this is four. So you swap four with five and that is done here. Then you consider six. Then you say, you find the minimum value from this, which is five. You will swap five with six. So in this, you will say uh, six is the minimum. So you will swap it with eight. Comparing this two, this is eight and nine. So you will swap eight with nine. And in last value, you don't have to even sort it because it's already sorted. And that's what we are doing here. And that's why we say it's size minus one. We don't even sort here. In fact, if you don't put this minus one, what will happen is if you run this code, you will get one more iteration and there's no change there. It doesn't matter how many values you have. You're not going to have any change in the last iteration. So you simply save it by saying minus one here. So yeah, that's how we use selection sort. Basically you find the minimum value and swap it with the location where it should be.